we're back from a model break. Um, it's definitely important to make sure that your model's comfortable and gets breaks because you want to make sure that they come back. <laughs> um, especially if you're doing commissions, um, you don't want the sitter to have a sort of like, um, like even if they're not doing, I think VG LeBron said this, like she's like always compliment your models. This is a secret. <laughs> she's like always compliment your models and tell them they're doing a really good job because um, then they'll be like happy to like sit and like they think they're doing a good job and they'll do like a better job. Um, and because if you like get sort of like upset with your model, like then they'll have an upset face and I've seen it happen like and then their face just looks really grumpy and then you have a painting of a grumpy person and so it's like it's always good to like have like good record with the the model um I mean I like to think that I'm just like a nice person like <laughs> genuinely <laughs> uh but if you that's something that you have to work on I would recommend doing it because you don't want to have an unhappy model because then you'll have an unhappy painting or painting of an unhappy person <laughs> Um, but, yeah, so, going in, so, I'm gonna, like, start working quite visually. This is the transfer drawing, so I'm not being, like, super precious, um, with, sort of, like, the final outcome of what it's gonna look like, I'm just... Trying to get information down. Um, so that I can transfer it. You want to keep it simple because you can't transfer loads of information. Uh, it's more of just like shapes. But you want to keep it simple anyways because I think that simpler paintings have more of an impact um, visually. Uh, I don't know, I just, I'm always like sort of like under modeling rather than over modeling, meaning like I don't have loads of uh, half tones just try and keep it simple all right so i'm glad that i sort of went in there um can i just move some of this thanks there we go Yeah, another thing to keep in mind is that the model has to like get settled into the pose. Um, so that's another reason why it's like quite good to be a little bit looser when you're starting um, because gravity will like sort of settle in and the, the model will sort of get into like a, a default sort of position. Um, and You sort of have to allow that to happen so that you have a bit more consistency moving forward um, rather than sort of like trying to force something that might feel a bit more unnatural um, and make it easier on yourself and the model. Um, Yeah, and then if you're working from a photo or you can't really have the model come in, um, it's important to still 
you know, working the same method of uh, keeping everything simple, you know, uh, and not getting distracted by all the information that you're seeing. Um, I'm trying to really make sure that I'm finding the Van Dyke Z because that's really going to help me feel confident with my drawing of the features and face and which sort of how much it's turning. So I'm going to try and clean up sort of all these half tones that I have. Um, and unify the shapes as like a, um, with maybe more straight lines that I'll be able to transfer uh, more easily. So I'm going to try and get the bottom of the hair. Another thing is, whenever I'm painting one side of the face, I want to be making sure that I'm paint. I'm also looking at the other side of the face or the neck. Always sort of painting them in unison, um, in consideration of each other, because sometimes you'll sort of end up painting an eye looking sort of turned this way and then the other eye turned that way and you get a little cross-eyed thing. So you want to make sure that you're keeping note of that um, as much as possible. Um, uh, very good. So looks like it's life size. Um, Got the ear, top of the head. Um, I'm not super confident with the chin. Oh, another thing that's uh, a useful tool and to use when you can remember to is um, your mirror. <laughs> uh, I have a mirror, but it's in my bag. You also could use your phone. So basically uh, what you would do is I just close my eye, use my dominant eye, and then I put it up to between my open eye and my nose. And it's sort of going perpendicular from my face. And just, you can see your drawing in the reflection of the screen. And that sort of puts it in the sort of inverse of what you've been observing for the whole time. So it's like you're seeing it fresh um, 
and almost sort of like you're seeing it for the first time. And so it will allow you to really see those shapes um, with a fresh eye. And there's also a way that you can do it where you put it above your eyebrows and you sort of look up and you can see it upside down. Um, and you can see the model and your drawing and sort of just flash your eyes back and forth and see what sort of stands out. Um, and let's see.